So they had big fight. They decided not to keep the contract with the UN agency and the country. And a few weeks after that, the 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 sort of drugs say, well, we think the amount of hectares in Colombia were bigger than we thought. Now is not. We think that the area is 160,000 and not 90 something thousand that the United Nations say. <laughs> so. The U.S. government is, was delegitimized all the all the all the effort. The U.S. Uh, side of drugs say last year, you know, uh, we were thinking that the supply of drugs from the Andean countries were 900 a thousand tons of of cocaine. Now we think it's 14 uh, 1400. So 40 percent more. So he changed his mind. Now he thinks it's 40% more of supply to the U.S. So when you see those numbers, no matter that the plan Colombia is successful, that has bipartisan support, that the Washington, that Colombia has done everything that committed, that there is no hostility to the U.S. in Colombia, not even the left uh, uh, rejects, there is no problems like Ecuador with the man, there is a lot, the U.S. Embassy in the Colombia is the largest, is largest, is, is, is bigger than Iraq embassy, than Afghanistan embassy, it's big enough, it's, an opera, it's a military aid that is the largest after Iraq and Egypt and Israel, I think, and well, even with all that, when you see the results of the policy of, of just interrupting the supply of drugs to the U.S., it's not working, it's not working. I mean, that is the, uh, but in this country, and I, I talked, uh, I don't remember who said earlier, uh, 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 the director of, 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 of foreign policy, this uh, a foreign affairs uh, uh, journal of, of Washington, a very important influential, uh, Moises Naim, that is a Venezuelan, is the director of, the, of, the, of, the, of, this, of this journal, and he says, no, everybody in Washington says this policy is failed, it's not working. But nobody wants to change it. No one, no, no one wants to face that because it's so identified with crime in the U.S. that nobody wants to talk about that because it's soft on crime. Anyone that talks about changing the drug policy in the U.S. is soft on crime. No member of Congress will take the risk of being soft on crime, so it's impossible to talk. How the U.S. got to that policy? It's a very strange. It was because of ideology, because of what? became with that policy of putting so many people in jail, of putting consumers in jail. I have trying to understand what happened, and, and it was about, about polls. They started to ask to see uh, uh, why people uh, 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 assault, do assaults and go to uh, uh, banks and pharmacies and take money, and, they, they found that these crimes were committed looking for money to buy drugs. And they also discovered that people that commit crimes are drugged, many of them, most of them. So the only way to, to, to fight crime was to put everyone in jail. And that's what happened. The, the, the U.S. has tripled the population, has ha 500,000 people in jail because of drugs. That is more than all the 25 countries of the European Union population in jails. All, for all crimes. For all crimes. The 25 countries of the European Union. The, the U.S. has more people in, in, in jail for drugs than they, all, the, all the jail population of, of Europe. When you see that, you start to see, I mean, it's the moment to start to see if, if it's not the moment to, to think how to deal with this in a different way. And it's not eliminating fight on drugs, no. But it's an intelligent policy to put so many people in jail. It will not be better to try to, you know, the Europeans that are, don't give the problem the importance they should. They do with consumers much better than the U.S., I have no doubt. They, they help people, they really help people who are addicted. They really give people drugs and help them and support them and have programs that work. 
And, and, and I think there is moment to start to, to change certain things, to make some differentiation between hard drugs and, not, and soft drugs. Uh, I mean, there is the moment at least to open a debate in the US. And the only way to change the policy, I mean, I, I am sorry because the Mexicans are just learning the things we learned the hard way in Colombia in the 80s and the 90s. We have a good national police to fight drugs. We, we, we are not, uh, I mean, we, we know to deal with a lot of, the, of, of those problems. But, uh, but they have a, a little margin of, do, of dealing with that just because the U.S. doesn't want to talk about that. And the Europeans either. They don't want to talk about drugs because that is a fight with the U.S. We don't want that fight, so we better don't talk about that. The, US, the U.N. has three agencies and three more that talk about drugs, and they, have, they are totally inefficient. So, so the, the debate is paralyzed. There is no debate about the policy on drugs, on a thing that is failing, because it's failing. And, it's, and the, the U.S. is putting $40 billion a year in fighting drugs with a policy that is failed, that is not working. I am sorry, but it's not working. It's not producing the results it should be producing. I think this is a good final question. I have about 200 here, but I think this is a question from a student. What can the common U.S. citizen, not a politician or a person in high position, do to influence or improve relations with our Latin American neighbors? Do you know what, what universities do? It's so important for, for the relations. Uh, the, the, the research, the accumulation of knowledge, of books, of learning, uh, it's, it's, it's very important to have resources, to have people that know countries, to, to put people to learn about Brazil and to learn about Argentina and to learn about Bolivia and to learn about Venezuela, to have, to have people who are interested in that. It's, it's absolutely critical. If you don't get that, you, you will never change the, 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 the relation. The people that, uh, that dedicate their life to Latin America in the U.S. Are, I mean, I'm talking about, about learning and are, are relatively few if you compare with any other region. Uh, 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 and uh, I think that is very important. The other thing is, is go there. Go there. I heard the, the dean, the dean, talking about the, 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 the requirement of obliging students to go and to go out of the university and to go to travel there, to go and learn about countries. That is very important. I mean, it's very difficult for this country to really change and give priority and importance to Latin America if you don't learn, if you don't travel, if you don't go, if you don't see. If you don't see the problems there and the challenges, I don't talk to people. I mean, that is method. The, the big advantage of this country over many others, it's method. You decide to learn about a country, about a problem, about a challenge, and you learn because you have method. Latin Americans do not have method to learn about things. We, we love to talk about things without knowing, knowing, <laughs> knowing much. But you have method. And I think, what, for example, what the university is trying to do is very important. It's very significant. It can, it, can, it can change because very few universities are doing that in the U.S. Very, very few universities are giving really importance to Latin America. I, I see, and there is a few, there is something in Harvard and something, I mean, a few universities trying to, to do certain things in Rice, in Texas. But there are really few universities that are giving priority to Latin America. And I think it's important what you're trying to do. And, and to try to do with the students and with research and to bring in a staff that knows Spanish and to, to helping people. And I think this idea of, of, of having people who have skills, who, have, who ha can relate with Hispanic communities and, and to, rela to relate the knowledge about countries and the improvement of relations with Latin America with working with Hispanic communities, it's, it's very important. It makes no sense that having the second uh, uh, community in this, in this country is not, cannot influence U.S. policy in relation to Latin America. That makes no sense. I am sure this Hispanic community will like to help Latin America a lot more. And that is not happening. It's just not happening because nobody is working in that. How to deliver on that? How to put 
people of Mexican origin or Colombian origin or Salvadorian origin, how to put them to help their countries. Not only sending remittances, but helping, improving the quality of the relation. Well, President Gaviria, we thank you for coming to the University of the Pacific and to Stockton. Thank you.